Facts are actually um, anorganic. They are not alive. They are dead matter. Uh, stories are alive. Even as a reporter, you bring them to life. You have to actually whisper, uh, to breathe, to breathe life into the facts. When you have a story, it's organic, it's alive. Stories multiply, stories uh, mutate, stories evolve. I'm not talking about fiction, I'm talking about reportage, I'm talking about essay. Uh, actually, this is what I try to do as I go out and, and, and have encounters and meet people and talk to them and uh, observe. I go back and try to write. I only have 26 letters of the alphabet and I have to try to put the story alive. I'm not making it up, but um, uh, uh, as a writer I, tr I try to, uh, to bring uh, the facts to life. Well, you're talking about um, L'Enigma del Lago Rosso. So, uh, actually, um, the story is about uh, the massive, massive dying of people, about 2,000, and thousands and thousands of animals overnight from one day to another, some 30 years ago, in Africa. Uh, we talk about Cameroon, in a remote valley, from one day to another, the whole valley was, um, let's say, wiped out, life extinguished. And this is quite important, there was no trace of destruction. So the, the, point, of, the point of the book is actually, um, uh, it's still a mystery. Scientifically, there are two schools that try to explain the phenomenon. Uh, they disagree and there is plenty of room for stories. Which stories are told after 25, 30 years? Which ones do better than other stories? Um, uh, so, so the whole book was about what is a story and how does it originate. Uh, can we see legends, myth uh, in the making, stories that grow and grow and grow? And how, how do how do they start? What, what is the what is the very birth of a story? And I looked from three different. Um, actually perspectives, and I call them the killers of myth, uh, the scientists. They tell you uh, it's a freak incident, it's natural, there is no Satan, there is no ghosts. Then I tell the story from the perspective of the missionaries that worked in the area and that discovered the bodies, discovered the apocalyptic scene. And I call them the bringers of myth, because they had the preconceived story about the Bible or even the Quran, some of the imams that went there. So they already have a story that fits all. And then the third part is dedicated to the makers of myth. And I think we're all makers of myth, if we want or not. But it has a reason, we have to cope with the situation, we have to cope with a traumatic event like the mass dying of people in a remote valley. So we make a story out of it. I really think that Soldati del Parola is like the next book after L'Enigma del Lago Rosso. What is a story was the subject of the first one. And this one actually um, uh, started with a crisis, a personal crisis, because I didn't know, I couldn't, um, uh, I was not sure whether it makes sense to write stories, to be a reporter, to go out to areas where there is war, or confronted with violence. Uh, I had this idea, so what does it really matter? that we write, that we take up a pen, that we discuss things. 
confronted with violence, which con confronted with terrorism, isn't the pen just way, way too weak? And I have contrasted two historical experiences with terrorism. One from my hometown in Holland. Uh, there were train hijackings. Uh, one of my teachers was one of the hijackers. He didn't appear at school. Uh, one of the classmates of my sister was one of the hijackers. They killed people. And the Dutch government, we're talking about the 70s, about the big wave of terror from Brigata Rosse, from Rota Armee Fraktion. We had our share in Holland, but the Dutch government responded in a very soft way. Maybe even the world record in softness. They sent in psychiatrists instead of Marines. They started to negotiate and it took weeks and weeks. We had five major hostage crises and they tried to solve them by talking. Now, this Dutch approach I have contrasted with the Russian approach. What is of value? What, what is of value to counter uh, violence and to what extent can we use language and words? And I try to regain some hope. <laughs>